This training module is an overview of methods for modeling runoff volume reduction by BMPs. This is training module 9.02 for the Stochastic Empirical Loading and Dilution Model SELDOM. It was prepared by the U.S. Geological Survey in cooperation with the Federal Highway Administration. This training module has eight slides and will take about seven minutes. This training module has four learning objectives. At the end of this module, you should be able to name the three primary volume reduction processes, describe the seldom approach for modeling volume reductions, describe the benefits of seldom modeling for planning level analyses, and describe the primary benefits of volume reduction. Volume reduction mechanisms include infiltration, evaporation, and transpiration. These mechanisms reduce the total load of runoff to the receiving water because loads are the product of flows and concentrations. This diagram shows a source area on the left, a BMP in the center, an overflow or bypass route above the BMP, and the receiving water on the right. The flow terms are shown in blue and concentration terms are shown as yellow. It is generally assumed that volume reductions for overflow or bypass flows are negligible. In some cases, groundwater discharge into the BMP can increase the discharge volume. In other cases, stormwater carryover from one storm to the next may also increase the discharge volume. This graph shows the fitted cumulative distribution functions for the trapezoidal distributions for volume reduction at 20 swale monitoring sites and the distribution that would occur if the median of each statistic were selected. There are large variations in fitted distributions among sites in every BMP category. The vertical axis is the volume reduction ratios on a linear scale. If a value exceeds 1, more water flows out from the BMP than flows in. This may occur if there is storm-to-storm -storm carryover or if there is groundwater discharge to the BMP. The horizontal axis is a probability scale indicating the percentage of storms with volume reductions that are less than or equal to a given value. Among these swales, the maximum values range from 0.27 to 2.75. The medians of the best fit statistics are about 0.06 for the minimum, 0.31 for the lower bound of the most probable value, 0.49 for the upper bound of the most probable value, and 1.08 for the maximum. This is a slightly right-skewed trapezoidal distribution. Seldom modeling indicates that swales can substantially reduce flows, especially for small storms. This graph shows the potential effectiveness of a grassy swale for modifying downstream storm flows. This example dilution factor analysis was done by using data from the USGS stream gauge on Sasco Brook near Southport, Connecticut. The dilution factor is the proportion of downstream flow that is comprised of highway runoff. A dilution factor of 1 occurs when there is no upstream flow, and a small dilution factor indicates that highway runoff is a small proportion of downstream flow. The dilution factor is the inverse of dilution. The vertical axis is the dilution factor on a logarithmic scale ranging over five orders of magnitude. The horizontal axis is a probability scale indicating the percentage of storms with dilution factors that equal or exceed a given value. The white line shows the dilution factors from highway runoff without BMP treatment. The light blue line represents potential effects of stochastic hydrograph extension values from a swale that may range from 6 minutes to 3 hours. The dark blue line represents the potential effects of stochastic flow reduction by a swale. The yellow line shows the dilution factors that would result if both extension and reductions are modeled. For the modeled swale, based on the medians of best fit volume reduction and flow extension statistics, volume reduction is the major contributor to the dilution factor reductions at this hypothetical site. Based on the median performance statistics from the International BMP database, Ponds also reduce flows, but not proportionally to swales. This graph shows the potential effectiveness of a detention pond for modifying downstream storm flows. This example dilution factor analysis was done by using data from the USGS stream gauge on Sasco Brook near Southport, Connecticut. The vertical axis is the dilution factor on a logarithmic scale ranging over five orders of magnitude. The horizontal axis is a probability scale indicating the percentage of storms with dilution factors that equal or exceed a given value. The white line shows the dilution factors from highway runoff without BMP treatment. The light blue line represents potential effects of stochastic hydrograph extension values from a pond that may range from 0 to 18 hours. 
The dark blue line represents potential effects of stochastic flow reduction. The yellow line shows the dilution factors that would result if both extension and reductions are modeled. For the modeled pond, based on the medians of best fit volume reduction and flow extension statistics, hydrograph extension is the major contributor to the dilution factor reductions at this hypothetical site when highway flow volumes are a large proportion of downstream flows. Flow reduction is the major contributor to the dilution factor reductions at this hypothetical site when highway flow volumes are a small portion of downstream flows. Both the swale and pond are effective at reducing loads. This graph shows the loads of total phosphorus in highway runoff, effluent from a grassy swale, and effluent from a detention pond BMP with a log scale on the vertical axis and the percentage of storms equaling or exceeding a given load with a probability scale on the horizontal axis. The graph shows that the pond is more effective at reducing loads for most storms than the swale, mainly because the pond is much more effective than the swale for reducing concentrations. This example shows how seldom can be used to evaluate different BMPs for meeting load reduction objectives in TMDL studies. In this module, we learn that the three primary volume reduction processes are infiltration, evaporation, and transpiration. Seldom stochastically generates the ratio of outflow to inflow for each storm. Seldom can be used to explore and demonstrate the potential effects of runoff reductions from different BMP designs and volume reduction increases the potential dilution of runoff in the receiving water, which reduces the dilution factor, and reduces the loads to the receiving water.